Hey guys, it's Karina with Karina Loves to Plan. Welcome back to my channel. So it is the end or coming to the end of December and I thought it was time to do an updated fountain pen collection. So this is my whole collection to date and I felt like I could film this today because I don't have any other pens on the way. I always felt like I couldn't film a fountain pen collection video if there was another pen on the way. So I'm trying really hard not to buy anything until January 2023. Let's get started. So the way that I'm going to do this is actually I'm going to do this in the order that I got the pen. So I will go through this chronologically. But if you remember my previous fountain pen collection videos, which I will put in the corner up here and put in the description below as well, you will see how my collection has changed over time. Just from a very beginner from like September of 2021 to now, there has been a lot of change. So let's move this. Actually, I feel like it's very distracting if I have both of them just right here. So let's start from the very beginning. I feel like I'm gonna break out into Sound of Music song. Okay, so the first one in my collection is this Cross Botanica Green Daylily. And I can't remember when I received this, but this was actually a gift from my dad. And I remember I was using it when I was still doing my master's in university. And I just used the cartridge. I was fine with using the cartridge. I had no idea about converters or fountain pen ink. But I love this because the detailing on it is just so beautiful. This is a pen that I will never get rid of. And it's got a steel fine nib. I didn't know what kind of nib it was until I looked closer down the side there, I think. Is it that side that has a little F on it? I saw an F somewhere, but it is a fine. Yes, there it is. Fine steel nib. And it is actually quite a smooth writer and it also has a very wet flow so I really love this pen. It is a little bit narrow for me but it's not a pen that I would ever ever get rid of. So I thought that that pen was great for the time but I didn't know anything about fountain pens but I really didn't like how I had to buy more cartridges, the ink bled through the paper. I still kept it though because it was a gift from my dad. Fast forward a bit, I tried a whole bunch of pens and then the next pen in my collection is the Pilot Kakuno. This was one of the first pens that I tried and I had, I've had like I think three or four different ones of these and this is the Clear Kakuno. It currently has actually a Pilot Calligraphy Medium nib on it and that nib is actually from a Pilot Prera. No, a Pilot Plumix. This nib is from a Pilot Plumix, and I also put in a Con 70 converter in here. So I feel like I've MacGyvered this pen to what I like, but this is such a great starter pen. Whenever somebody asks me what I would recommend for a starter pen, I always say a Pilot Kakuno. So after that one, my other, or my most recent one after that was a Sailor Pro Gear Slim. This was my second gold nib. My first ever gold nib is no longer in my collection. I have since sold it, but this is a Sailor Pro Gear Slim in Dragon Palace, and it has a gold medium fine nib. There have been times that I have been tempted to sell this on because it is a little small, but every time I write with it, it actually does feel really good in my hand and it's just beautiful. It's one of those pens that just has a really, really classic look and Sailor has a great, gold nib. There's a little bit of feedback. It's not like glassy smooth like a pilot is, but there is something to be said about a Sailor nib. So after I purchased my Sailor Pro Gear Slim, literally immediately after that, I went on eBay and purchased a Sailor Pro Gear in the white rose gold. So I bought this off of eBay literally less than a month after I got my Sailor Pro Gear Dragon Palace. And this has the white rose gold detailing and the nib is a 21 karat rose gold medium fine. And I love this because it is a little bit heavier than the Pro Gear Slim. It fits really well in my hand. I actually don't write with this post-it. I write with this like this because I find sometimes that post-it, it can be a little back heavy, but I love the 21 karat medium fine nib. I just feel like it's a little softer than the nib on the uh, 14K 
on the Pro Gear Slim. And it has also a little bit of a wetter nib. So I really, really love this pen. And it just feels very classic looking, this Pro Gear Slim. So that was two sailors within the span of a month. And then I said to myself, no more sailors. Spoiler alert, there is one more sailor. Anyway, after the Sailor Pro Gear Slim, I ended up buying the Vanishing Point. So this is the Pilot Vanishing Point, and this is in a fine 18 karat nib. I had had a uh, Sailor, no, a Pilot Vanishing Point Decimo, and I loved the retractable nib. And I love Pilot nibs, absolutely love Pilot nibs, but I found the Decimo was just a bit too narrow and too light, whereas this one is a good width in the grip section. I do not mind the clip at all, but I love the, I love that. Absolutely love that. And I liked the gunmetal rhodium gray just because it is, I still find it neutral, but it also is very modern looking. I have seen some fantastic models of special editions of Pilot Vanishing Points, but they're only available in Japan. And I'm like, hmm, I don't know. I like this because it is sleek, it is modern looking, and I don't think I'll ever get rid of it. So, Pilot Vanishing Point. I think if you are ever wanting a gold nib, this is actually not a bad price point. In Canada, I got this for $200 Canadian. I think you can get this in the US now for $156 US. So it's not a bad pen for a gold. It's, it's actually a really great pi price for a gold nib. So that is my Pilot Vanishing Point. After that, I did say to myself, no more pens. And then every time I say no more pens, it's literally like a day before I buy a new one. I bought the Lamy All-Star in January of this year. I wasn't sure about Lamy because the first ever Lamy that I had was the Lamy Safari and it was in the Savannah, no, it was in the green. I don't remember, but I didn't like the nib. It was scratchy. Ugh but then I got a Lamy Vista, fantastic. Uh, and then I sold that one to a friend because I then had the All-Star in Cosmic and I thought one Lamy is enough, especially since it has the interchangeable nibs. So this one has a 1.1 stub nib. This was my first ever stub nib, but I also have this in an extra fine and a fine nib. So I love that about Lamy that they have the interchangeable nibs. So. I don't need more than one Lamy. This is fine for me if I want to change over to the extra fine or the fine or keep the stub on here. I love that. And the thing with the Lamy Safari is that it does have the structured grip section. So if you have a non-conventional grip, this might not work for you, but I really do like it and it works for me. And I, I mean, you can post it, but for me, it just is a massive pen posted. Um, and then again, those interchangeable nibs, such a great option. So that is the Lamy All-Star in Cosmic. After that one, I'm looking at my list here. After that one, I decided to splurge and get myself something for my birthday. And I got this Pelican M400 in the white tortoise. I mean, look at that. This was my first ever Pelican and it has an extra fine 14 karat gold nib and it is just gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful pen. This one I write with posted because it is a smaller pen. It's about the same size really as a Sailor Pro Gear Slim. And I do find the grip section a little bit narrow, especially now that my nails are getting longer, but I do just, it's a gorgeous pen. It is a gorgeous pen. Now, the extra fine writes more like a fine, almost a medium fine. Um, so if you really like very, very fine, extra fine nibs, this may not be for you because it is also quite a wet writer. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, this was a grail pen of mine, but I think I was so early on in my collection at that time that I didn't really understand the concept of a grail pen because my tastes change over time. So would this still be a grail pen for me now? Probably not. But back then in February of this year, February, 2022, this was a grail pen for me. So I got this from Cult Pens in the UK and it was much more, it was cheaper than buying it from any American or Canadian retailer. So that's the Pelican M400 and the white tortoise. After that, I, got my first ever 
vintage pen. So I bought this off of eBay. I, I say heavily influenced, but hev yeah, heavily influenced by uh, Adventure Denali, who has a wonderful collection of vintage pens, but also Doodlebud, who is a fellow Canadian. He loves this pen as a flex pen. It, I can't remember the exact year this was, but this was, this is a Pelican 140. You've got the striations in there, just like a Pelican, but it does have the rounded cap and finial, but it, uh, it has, it's got a bit of ink on that nib there. Beautiful 14 karat. I believe it's a fine nib, but it does have some great flexing action. I love this nib. I think this, this was actually my first flex nib and I absolutely love it. Such a cute little pen. And actually for a vintage pen, it was quite well priced. I highly recommend looking these up on eBay. So after my first vintage pen, I got the Twisby Diamond 580. And the original nib that, that came with this was a fine nib and I didn't like it. It wasn't as smooth as I would like it to be. I felt like it was just too much feedback to the, you know, on the verge of scratchy. So I had this sent off, when did I have it sent off? End of August and to Mark Bacchus. And he actually ground this for me. So he had the, or I had him grind this. Originally, I was just gonna get him tuning or to tune and smooth it, but I had him grind this to a stub. So this is a fine stub and I love it. It's a completely different pen now. It's such a wet writer, but still has that line variation you get with a fine stub nib. And I love this size of stub nib because my writing is generally smaller. So bigger stub nibs, won't work for me because my writing is just too small. So all the letters just get all jumbled up together. So I love this pen now. Absolutely love this pen. So after the Twisby Diamond 580, I then got, is it this one? Ah, no, it was this one. This is the Pelican M605 in the black tortoise. And I say 605 because the five at the end basically means it's got the rhodium trim. And look at that. This was, I guess, a special edition for 2022. And this is a slurt, I say a small, no, cannot speak, a larger model than the 400. So the 400, you can see the difference there in the two models, which one is bigger, and I actually think that the M600 model or the M605 is a better fit for my hand. I like the width of it in my hand. I like the way that it feels, although I am tempted. I need to try an M800 and see how I feel about that. So that is the Pelican M605 in the Black Tortoise. After the Pelican, then I got my first ever Bennu. I got this Bennu from Pen Chalet, and this was basically from a whole bunch of people using my affiliate link in the description below. Every time you guys use that, I get some credit towards buying pens of my own. So I was able to do that with uh, many people's help. So just as a side note here, if you've never purchased from Pen Chalet, use my code below to get $10 off your first order. Um, but this is such a outstanding pen. There's nothing else to say about it that it's just like, Wow, you know, it's a gorgeous pen. If you're not for the bling or the really stand out pen, this may not be for you, but I really do like it. And it come, or I got it with a fine nib and it is a steel Schmidt nib. And it's actually a fantastic writer. It is a fantastic writer. I've had shimmer inks in this and it still flowed amazingly well. So, Benu. Highly recommend that. Highly recommend them. After the Benu, I ended up buying a Twisby Eco. I'm not counting this towards my collection because I am actually uh, on the way to selling this. Um, and that came with a stub nib. So I'm just gonna pass over that very quickly. But after that one, I ended up buying this Pelican M605 in the green and white from Dan uh, at the nibsmith.com. And the reason that I ended up purchasing this, I wasn't planning on buying another Pelican M600 model, but the reason that I purchased this was because one, the price was really, really good, but two, along with that price, Dan offered a nib grind. 
So I decided to get this ground into a cursive smooth italic. And this was actually my first ever grind. I know that I introduced the Tuesby Diamond 580 with a grind earlier, but this was the first pen that I ever had ground um, by a professional nib smith, and I love it. It's like a stub nib, but slicier. Absolutely love this pen. I you will you will be able to see from this collection that I like my italics, my smooth italics. So that is the Pelican M605 in the green and white. After that one, <laughs> I'm excited for this one. This was my first ever Le Bon. This is the Le Bon Rosa in the lilac. And I had been eyeing this pen for a couple of months, actually. And I wasn't sure about Le Bon at first. And I had watched all the videos on all the different Le Bon models. And I never really saw any in this model. But I love the acrylic in this. I love the gold band. And it just feels perfect in my hand. Absolutely perfect. It does have a steel nib and I got this in a medium. And it's just such a gorgeous writer. Absolutely gorgeous writer. This is probably one of my top three pens. Love this one. This is one of the pens that made me go, the price of a pen doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go with a gold nib. The price of a pen also will be because of the materials used, how it looks. So what I'm willing to pay for a pen is not just whether or not it has a gold nib, because this doesn't have a gold nib, it's got a steel nib, but the way that it looks and the way that it writes. I think I have more steel nibs now in my collection than I do gold nibs, and some of my steel nibs write just as well as my gold nibs. Mm, love my Lebon. So after that Lebon, I immediately got another Lebon. This one directly from Lebon themselves. This Lebon I got from Gold Spot Pens, and I do have an affiliate link for them in the description below. So this one is the Lebon 325 in the Cambridge model. I think it was Kathleen in the comments who said this one looks like a tuxedo. It is so classy looking and cl classy and classic looking. And I originally got this in a broad, but I had, the, had this sent off to Mark Bacchus and he ground it down for me. And I believe it is now a medium cursive italic. One of my favorites, I love a cursive italic nib and it gives your writing so much line variation. I highly recommend trying out different nibs, trying out different nib grinds. That is my thing, but this is just such a classy looking pen. It is a bigger pen. You will find now that I am liking bigger pens. They just fit better in my hand and I'm not squeezing my hand so tight to grip the pen. And look, it's just so classic. I am eyeing another Le Bon 325 in my future. Mm. Gorgeous pen, gorgeous pen. So after the Le Bon 325, I did go through I think maybe from like July to let's say November, July to November of this year, I said no more pens. Obviously that didn't work out. So after the Le Bon 325, I got a Pilot Prera. Why did I get this pen? I'm trying to remember why I bought this pen other than the fact that I had an Amazon gift card to buy it, but I was not a fan of the Pilot Metropolitan, but I love the look of this pen. This one I got directly from Amazon. I love the look of this pen, but I also love the fact that these nibs are interchangeable. And it also has, it has a medium nib. <laughs> this medium nib is actually from the Pilot Kakuno. So the nibs are interchangeable between the Pilot Kakuno, Pilot Plumix, Pilot Metropolitan. All of those have interchangeable nibs. So that is actually what I like about it. It's the classic look of this, but also it has the uh, interchangeable nibs. But also I love this, oh, that clicking. So satisfying. And if you were sitting next to me at like a work meeting or something, you would probably get annoyed with me going like this. <laughs> so after the Pilot Prera, I was actually contacted by Gold Spot Pens and they said, we'd love to send you a pen to try. Uh, and I gave them two choices and this was the one they sent me. This is the Narwhal Nautilus in Grand Rhapsody. This is my first Ebonite. Pen. I think it's the only ebonite pen I have. Yeah. First ebonite pen, and this is a piston filler, just like a Twisby, and, I, and like a Pelican, and it's got the, 
the ink window looks like the window of a submarine. I love that. And it has a fine steel nib, but this is such a wet writer. But look at the detailing on the nib there. This is a lovely wet writer. Feels great in my hand. It is a big pen, but as you can see, I'm loving the big pens. And I just, I just love the swirls of the ebonite on there. Lovely, fantastic pen. So that one was courtesy of Gold Spot Pens, the Narwhal. My first and I think only Narwhal at the moment. After that, oh, after that, I was at the Planners Gonna Plan conference in Toronto and I met Angel of the Angel Shop. And she says her dad is actually, you know, a collector of fountain pens and together they helped come up with a, I guess, proprietary fountain pen for her shop. So this is the Tiffany model and this was $20, $20. Um, and it's got a little bit of a hooded nib there and I believe it's only a fine nib and it's also got actually the structured grip section as well but it is pretty much a metal pen it is a little heavy um, I haven't been able to find a converter that fits with it yet but I've just been cleaning out the cartridge and refilling that but it is such a like a different looking fountain pen and actually quite inexpensive and it's an amazing writer it's an amazing writer so for anybody who is unsure or wants to actually get into fountain pens this is actually a great one to start with for you know 20 Canadian that I got it for it's a little bit more expensive on the website but these are fantastic immediately after that when I got home I ended up buying where did it go this this other one from the angel shop and this one is the I believe it's called the glamorous Lux pen so it's got kind of like the rose gold leaf in there and the rose gold detailing and she said this one came from her second so there were some minor imperfections but i see absolutely nothing wrong with this pen it also comes with that fine nib there excellent writer i put a sheening ink in the cartridge and put it through this and it worked amazingly absolutely amazingly so looking for an inexpensive but actually luxurious looking pen highly recommend the angel shop and cleaning out the converter is not a big deal whatsoever as long as you have a blunt tip syringe you can clean those out so so easily so those are my two pens from the angel shop so this next pen was a total splurge it was one of those where the price was right so i just had to i had a budget actually for november for fountain pen day as well as black friday and this was definitely within the budget but it was not the pen that i had originally said i was going to buy in november um this is the sailor pro gear slim in christmas pudding and the reason that i bought it was because i had seen it it kept coming back to me i said you know, I don't need it. I don't need a sailor. I've been able to pass up so many different sailors throughout the year. I have two sailors. I'm fine. I don't need any more. I forget who it was that messaged me and said, there's a company in Japan, Gut Goucher, that had this at an amazing price. And they had it in a medium nib, not a medium fine. I wanted a medium nib. So I splurged and I got the Christmas pudding in the medium nib in the 14 karat medium nib and it is gorgeous. I love the brown body. I love the green sparkly cap, but also there's that little red logo on the finial there. Such a gorgeous pen. And now I have three sailors. I don't need any more. It's one of the, Sailor is a fantastic pen. And I know there's some people who love collecting all of the new ones that come out and Sailor comes out with so many that there will be one that will be for you for sure. Or all 10 will be for you for me i think i have the sailors that i want and i am satisfied with the sailors that i want i don't need any more sailors because the three i have are gorgeous oh henry just sneezed bless you so then after this one i thought i still have a little bit left in that november budget that i said i was going to stick to so after that sailor i went with this this is a new brand to me and this one I feel like the online ads or the ads that you see in your email 
were totally targeted to me and they were very successful in their marketing. This is a Ranga Zayante Z2 in their iced mocha and I bought this off Peyton Street Pens. What got me with this was one, I mean, it's just beautiful, that iced mocha acrylic. But two, what I love about this is that Peyton Street Pens along with Ranga, because Ranga offers these in the Yovo number no. six nib housing. Peyton Street Pens also has nibs in the different grinds. This one is a fine architect Yovo nib. And that was what got me with these. Instead of having to send a pen off to be ground by a nib smith, they have the cursive smooth italic as well as the architect nibs already in shop that they could send to you to go along with your order. So with this, I got, this pen actually came with a flex nib and I also bought an additional architect nib, which is currently what's on there as well as a cursive, uh, a fine cursive uh, italic, which is currently on my husband's Jin Hao pen. <laughs> but it's such a great pen for the price and getting the, flex nib as well as the two additional nibs. I cannot recommend this enough. And I mean, the only thing with the Ranga pens is they do kind of smell like rubber. There's a rubbery smell to them, but otherwise it is a great quality pen. These are handmade by a family owned business in India. So they, they have different group buys, but you can also buy them through Peyton Street pens. So those, that is my Ranga pen. And then my last two pens were unexpected. The, I will show them in the order that I bought them, not the order that I received them. So this is the Leonardo Officina Italiana Memento Zero Grande 2.0 in Angel Skin. It is a very long name. <laughs> and this is my first Leonardo pen. This is a pen that I just, you know, oogled at for ages since it came out. The price tag though, it was not within my price range. I was not willing to pay that for this pen. And then came Black Friday with Pen Chalet. They had 15% off. Plus I had all of my referral credits. So I was able to get this pen at a fantastic price. Uh, and even my husband said that's a really good deal. So this angel skin, it comes with, well, it's a piston fill, but it comes with a 14 karat rose gold nib, and I got this in a fine. And my first impressions of it were meh, literally meh. But the more that I wrote with it, I absolutely love it now. So I am so glad that this is part of my collection. I bought this on Black Friday and arrived on December 15th, so it took a little time. In the waiting for this pen, I kept looking at other pens, especially ones that would take Yovo nibs. Af especially after getting that Ranga, I was like, what are some other pens that take Yovo nibs? And that brought me down the road of independent pen makers. A lot of the hand-turned pens, a lot of those take Bach or Yovo nibs. And that's what really got me with these types of pens is the ability to change the nibs and to create a different writing experience with them. So this is the Model 3 in Moonlit Rodden from F3 pens. And it is just this fantastic, gorgeous material. And it came with, it came with a fine nib, but I actually put the flex nib on here from Peyton Street Pens and it writes magnificently. I may be going down the rabbit hole of independent pen makers and hand-turned pens because of the ability to be able to change nibs, but also the fact that you can actually speak to the maker of this pen. I have been speaking with the maker of F3 pens and he has been amazing with telling me about, you know, if I'm gonna change the nib that I have to make sure that the cart or the converter inside is um, not screwed on so tight and, you know, showed me pictures of the different pens that I was looking at. And when I took this out, when I unboxed this, I was like, oh my God, I don't have any other pen that looks like this. And it's just so unique and beautiful. And 
you may see a few more pens like this come 2023. So that is my fountain pen collection as of December 2022. Yes, it does look very different to my pen collection in July earlier this year. I have also accumulated way more pens than I thought I would accumulate this year. My collection is now, let's see, I bought a Girologio 24 pen case. How many do I have? So I have six and 12, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Oh, it still fit in the 24 pen case. So my goal was not to fit, fill that pen case. But let me know your thoughts on this collection. What does your collection look like? I love being able to try different brands, different nibs. You can see that in my collection that I haven't stuck to one brand. I'm really opening to trying different brands, different makers, different nibs, because I'm still in that part or that stage of my pen journey where I'm still experimenting. And when I find something that I like, I will stick with it, but I'm still open to trying new things. So that is my fountain pen collection for you. Thank you guys so much for watching and have yourselves a great day.